All right, so let's start talking about the autonomic nervous system, chapter 14. The autonomic nervous system, um, abbreviated to ANS, excuse me, brain lapse, uh, the involuntary arm of the peripheral nervous system, uh, the PNS, also known as the visceral uh, motor division. Divided into two components, you have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic division. Uh, these two different systems work together to maintain homeostasis. Um, this function or this uh, system oversees vital functions such as the heart rate, blood pressure, digestion, urinary processes. Uh, these are things done automatically or autonomously without conscious control. Uh, the uh, ANS manages vital processes through visceral reflex arcs. Uh, sensory stimulus leads to predictable uh, motor responses. Uh, the sensory signal from the viscera and the skin are sent by the afferent sensory neurons to the brain or the spinal cord, uh, and then they are integrated into the central nervous system. These motor impulses from the central nervous system are sent via efferent neurons in the cranial and spinal nerves. They usually lead to auto autonomic ganglia in the peripheral nervous system. Uh, these autonomic ganglia send impulses via other efferent neurons to various target organs. At those targets, orders the organs, the motor response is then triggered. Uh, again, this is an example of cell-to-cell -cell communication. So here we have sensory signals from the viscera and the skin are sent by the afferent sensory neurons to the brain or spinal cord. Stimuli is integrated by the central nervous system. Uh, motor impulses from the central nervous system are sent via the efferent neurons uh, in the cranial spinal nerves to the autonomic ganglion. Uh, from the autonomic ganglion, then sends the impulses via uh, other efferent motor neurons to various target organs where they trigger a motor response at the target cell. Uh, the main differences between the motor divisions, the somatic motor division innervates skeletal muscle, which leads to voluntary muscle contraction. Uh, these things are initiated consciously. <clears throat> Excuse me. The autonomic motor division, uh, these are neurons that innervate smooth muscle cells and cardiac muscle cells and glands, and they produce involuntary reactions. So somatic motor division, voluntary autonomic motor division, involuntary. Uh, the autonomic nervous system, uh, motor neurons do not, <clears throat> excuse me, directly innervate their targets like the somatic motor neurons do. Uh, they require a two neuron circuit. You have a preganglionic neuron, which is the initial effect neuron. That's the cell body resides within the central nervous system. <clears throat> Excuse me, and all axons release acetylcholine. The postganglionic neuron, uh, the cell body uh, resides in the autonomic ganglion of the PNS. Uh, the axons travel to target cells. They trigger specific changes, either inhibitory or excitatory responses, and they either release norepinephrine or acetylcholine. So the preganglionic neuron releases acetylcholine postganglionic, either acetylcholine or norepinephrine. And here is the somatic nervous system. There's the structure, goes to the skeletal muscle. The autonomic nervous system, you see you have a axon that leads to a cell body, which to another axon or to a gland or to a smooth muscle. Voluntary control for the somatic, involuntary control for the autonomic. Uh, the sympathetic nervous system has preganglionic axons that are short <clears throat> and post <clears throat> excuse me and postganglionic axons that are usually long whereas the parasympathetic uh, the uh, axons the preganglions are long and the postganglions are short so exactly an inverse relationship sympathetic preganglions are short postganglions are long Parasympathetic preganglions are long, postganglions are short. And again, here is the drawing of these. Here is the thoracic and lumbar vertebra for the spinal cord, spinal nerve. There's the ganglion, 
you see the long postganglionic nerve or neuron to the target cell. And here's the parasympathetic. You see the long here and the short. The preganglionic cell bodies of the sympathetic system originate in either the thoracic or upper lumbar spinal cord, uh, giving rise to its name, the thoracolumbar, thoracolumbar region. Uh, the sympathetic ganglion generally are located near the spinal cord, with the preganglion uh, synapse with the postganglion neuron cell bodies. The postganglionic axon proceed to the target. Uh, the sympathetic nervous system is our fight or flight system of the autonomic nervous system. Uh, this is the system that prepares us for emergency situation, uh, plays a vital role in maintenance of homeostasis when the body is engaged in physical work, and it mediates the body's responses to emotion. Uh, the parasympathetic nervous system, so that would be the Sympathetic, fight or flight. Uh, the parasympathetic nervous system is, uh, is also sometimes called the resting and digesting system. Uh, here, the preganglionic cell bodies are located within nuclei of several cranial nerves in the brain stem and the sacral region of the spinal cord, which gives rise to its name, the craniosacral division. The cranial nerves innervate structures of the head and neck, the thoracic viscera, and most of the abdominal viscera. The sacral nerves innervate structures within the pelvic region. Uh, the cell bodies of the postganglionic neuron are usually located near the target, so they're thus requiring only a short axon to make the connection. Again, this is the rest and digest division. Plays a role in digestion and maintaining body homeostasis at rest. And here are the divisions of the autonomic nervous system. We have the sympathetic division over here. There's the brain stem, the preganglionic neurons, the target organs. And over here, the parasympathetic with its long preganglions and short postganglions. There's the target organs. See the parasympathetic coming from the brain stem and the sacral region and the sympathetic thoracic, lumbar, and cervical region. Uh, actions of the parasympathetic division generally antagonize those of the sympathetic uh, division. Together, they maintain a, a delicate balance to ensure homeostasis is preserved. Uh, antagonistic means they have the opposite effect. So generally, what's going on in the parasympathetic uh, counters what is going on in the sympathetic and vice versa. If one's elevating something, the other one works to depress it. Uh, a ganglion, remember, is a cluster of neuron cells. Uh, the prefix pre means before, post meaning after. So therefore, a preganglionic neuron is a neuron in front or before the ganglion. Postganglionic neuron one that will be located within the ganglion and whose action comes after the ganglion. Uh, if you're still confused with terminology, try to associate different words with pre and post. Uh, They're easy to remember. Uh, sports fans out there, the pre-game show comes on before the game. The post-game show comes on after the game. For example, something as simple as the first neuron and second neuron may remind you of positions of pre and post neurons in the pathway. Again, I still prefer pre-game shows on before, the post-game show is on after. Let's talk a little bit about the, symp the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, this is our fight or flight system. The anatomical features will come up in a minute, uh, but there is a sympathetic chain ganglion where most of the postganglionic cell bodies are found runs down both sides uh, parallel with the vertebral column in a chain-like uh, appearance. Uh, each section of the chain extends above the thoracic spinal cord, terminates in the superior cervical ganglion. Uh, the section of the chain that extends below the lumbar spine terminates in the inferior sacral ganglion. 
Preganglionic neurons originate in the lateral horns of the thoracic and lumbar spinal cord. They exit with axons of motor, motor neurons via the anterior root. The preganglionic axons quickly separate from the spinal nerves anterior ramus to form small nerves called white ramy communicates. White meaning they are myelinated. And this leads to the postganglionic cell bodies in the sympathetic chain ganglion. <clears throat> Sorry about the call. So here is the preganglionic nerve body. There's the anterior root. We're going to come out. There's the white ramus communicans and the sympathetic chain ganglion. Uh, some preganglionic axons pass through the chain ganglion without forming synapses. Uh, they may form, form a synapse with a collateral ganglion uh, located near the target organ. The preganglionic axons that synapse with collateral ganglia near the organs of the abdominal pelvic cavity uh, are referred to as the, or are components of what is referred to as the splanchnic nerves. And again, here are those connections showing the vertebra, thoracic, and lumbar and their connections in a flow up of the individual connections moving on to further extending outward toward the edges of the body. Uh, the three synapse locations are possible between the pre and post neurons. You have the preganglionic ax axons, which can synapse with post ganglionic cell bodies in a sympathetic chain ganglion at the level of the spinal cord where they are where they exited. Uh, Preganglionic axons can ascend or descend to synapse with postganglionic cell bodies in sympathetic chain ganglia found at a different spinal cord level, or they can uh, pass through the chain ganglia and travel to a collateral ganglia where they synapse. Uh, Postgang postganglionic axons exit the ganglia as small gray ramy communipons. Uh, gray because they are unmyelinated. Uh, they will then reunite to travel with the spinal nerves until they reach their target cells. So here we have the axon descending or ascending. Form a different chain. Here's the axon synapsing with the postganglionic neuron. And here is the axon passing through the chain to a different target cell. Uh, neurotransmitters of the sympathetic system, they're going to bind with specific protein-based receptors embedded in the plasma membranes of the target cells. Uh, the following slides will summarize the sympathetic nervous system neurotransmitters and their target cells with which they bind. There's acetylcholine. Anytime you talk about neurotransmitters, you're going to see acetylcholine. Uh, it is used in the excitatory synapses between the sympathetic preganglionic axons and postganglionic neurons. Uh, the postganglionic axons then transmit their action potentials to the target cell. At the synapse with the target cells, the postganglionic axons will release one of three neurotransmitters, uh, acetylcholine, epinephrine, which is sometimes referred to as adrenaline, and norepinephrine or noradrenaline. Uh, this is the most frequently utilized neurotransmitter released in the synapse between postganglionic axons and target cells. Uh, adrenic and adrenergic receptors bind the epinephrine and the norepinephrine, uh, forming two major types of androgenic receptors, the alpha and the beta. Uh, the alpha found in the plasma membrane of smooth muscle cells uh, of many different organs, including blood vessels in the skin, <clears throat> the GI tract and the kidneys, the erectile pili muscles in the dermis, and certain organs of the genitourinary tract. Uh, the alpha-2 receptors found in the plasma membranes of the preganglionic sympathetic neurons instead of peripheral target cells. The beta-1 receptors are found in the plasma membranes of cardiac muscle certain kidney cells and adipose cells. Beta-2 receptors are found in the plasma membrane of smooth muscle, 
uh, that line the airways of the respiratory tract and in the walls of the bladder, also found in skeletal muscle fibers and in the cells found in the liver, the pancreas, and salivary glands. And finally, beta-3 receptors primarily found in adipose cells and smooth muscle cells in the walls of the digestive tract. Uh, chlorogenic receptors bind to acetylcholine. There's two different types of those. <clears throat> Muscarinic receptors are found on the sweat glands in the skin. Nicotinic receptors uh, in the membranes of the postganglionic neurons uh, within the sympathetic ganglia and the adrenaline medulla. Alpha-2 receptors uh, differ from other endogenic receptors. Uh, usually their action potential is found in the postganglionic neuron, which leads to an acetylcholine release, which stimulates the postganglionic neuron. However, when norepinephrine binds to the alpha-2 receptors, the axon terminal is hyperpolarized, which slows or cancels the action potential. Uh, this is a component of a negative feedback loop. Therefore, the, uh, the activity of the alpha-2 receptors uh, follows the feedback loop principle where we have the post-ganglionic, the pre-ganglionic neurons activity is reduced or shut down to prevent excessive sympathetic output. And again, here are those receptors. Uh, once the uh, norepinephrine binds to the alpha-2, then the acetylcholine gets released or is being released. But when the norepinephrine attaches, then the secretion of acetylcholine stops. Uh, the effect of the central of the uh, somatic nervous system or sympathetic, excuse me, directed at ensuring survival and maintenance of homeostasis. Uh, what the effects on the cardiac muscle cell? Uh, norepinephrine binds to beta-1 receptors, causing the ion channels to open on cardiac muscle cell, which raises both the rate and force of contraction. Uh, the amount of blood being delivered to the tissues and blood pressure both increase, which maintains homeostasis during increased physical activity. Uh, on smooth muscle, the norepinephrine binds to specific receptors mediating changes such as constriction of blood vessels, which serve as the digestive urinary and integumentary system. The norepinephrine binds to alpha-1 receptors, which decreases blood flow to these organs. Uh, the effects can also uh, cause dilation of the bronchioles when norepinephrine binds to the beta-2 receptor which increases the amount of air that can be inhaled with each breath. Uh, blood vessels can become dilated, uh, serving both skeletal and cardiac muscle. Uh, norepinephrine binds to beta-2 receptors, which increases blood flow, which allows for the increased physical activity. Uh, it'll also lead to contraction of urinary and digestive sphincters. When more norepinephrine binds to these beta-2 and beta-3 receptors, makes emptying the bladder and bowel more difficult during physical activity. Relaxation of smooth muscles of the digestive tract. If norepinephrine, however, binds to beta-2 receptors, that slows digestion during an increased physical activity. Uh, norepinephrine binds to alpha-1 receptors, causing uh, dilation of the pupillae muscles uh, of the eyes and causes the pupil to allow more light into the eye. Uh, constriction of the blood vessels serving most of the exocrine glands. Uh, when, it, when norepinephrine binds to beta receptors on the blood vessels serving various glands, uh, this decreases secretion except in the sweat glands. During sympathetic activation, nearly all cells, especially skeletal muscle cells, require higher amounts of ATP. To meet this higher demand, norepinephrine has three effects when it binds to beta-3 receptors on uh, apidocytes, triggers a breakdown of lipids, which releases free fatty acids to the bloodstream. Beta-2 receptors in the liver cell triggers the release of glucose from glycogen and synthesizes glucose from other sources. <clears throat> And when it binds to beta-2 receptors on the pancreas, triggers release of the hormone glucagon, which increases blood glucose levels. 
sympathetic nervous system attempts to maintain body temperature during periods of increased physical activity by in, uh, having an effect on sweat gland secretions. Uh, the postganglionic sympathetic neurons release acetylcholine onto sweat gland cells in the skin. And that acetylcholine binds to the mucerinic receptors that decrease sweat glands, or excuse me, increase sweat gland secretion. Again, these all play a role in, in or follow that feedback loop core principle. Again, here is the sympathetic nervous system target cells showing the target, the neurotransmitter, the receptor organ, and the main effect. Uh, the adrenal medulla sits on top of each kidney, uh, is in direct contact with the preganglionic sympathetic neurons. The medulla is composed of modified sympathetic postganglionic neurons. Uh, acetylcholine, when it is released from the preganglionic neurons, binds to the nicotinic receptors on the adrenal medulla. The ACH or the acetylcholine stimulates the medullary cells to release norepinephrine and epinephrine into the bloodstream. Uh, these, when they're in the bloodstream, are considered to be hormones rather than neurotransmitters. And it acts uh, as a long distance chemical messenger interfacing between the endocrine and the sympathetic nervous systems. So here's the preganglionic cyst into the adrenal medulla. Uses, causes the norepinephrine have an effort to be released to the blood, and then once they enter the blood, they are no longer considered neurotransmitters. They are now considered hormones. Uh, on other cells' effects, the sympathetic nervous system influences many other target cells, all with the mission of maintaining homeostasis during increased physical or emotional stress. Uh, these neurotransmitters can enhance mental alertness by increasing neuron activity in association areas of the cerebral cortex. <clears throat> they can temporarily increase tension generated by, cell mus by skeletal muscle cells during muscle contraction. Uh, this is the reason people have been known to perform unusual feats of strength uh, under the influence of an adrenaline rush or an epinephrine rush. Uh, this is when the, you know, the lady picks the car up off her baby or something like that. Uh, that is how this works, it is a temporary increased tension generated by the skeletal muscles. Uh, increases the, blood, the blood's tendency to clot. Uh, this can be useful if a person is injured during the flight or flight, a fight or flight situation. Uh, Postganglionic sympathetic neurons trigger contraction of the erectile filling muscles, which produce goosebumps. You know, everybody knows what goosebumps are. Uh, can cause ejaculation of semen via effects of the small muscle cells of male reproductive ducts. <clears throat> so these are uh, the roles, again, on other target cells of neurotransmitters. Um, the pharmacological and sympathetic nervous system receptors. Uh, sympathetic nervous system receptors have provided targets for medication therapy for many diseases, uh, including asthma and hypertension. Wish I could find one to get rid of this cough I seem to have developed. <clears throat> Existence of different subtypes of sympathetic nervous system receptors have allowed researchers to design drugs that are fairly specific for one type of receptor uh, and so certain organs, and that would help maintain potential side effects or help minimize, excuse me, potential side effects. Uh, agonists, drugs typically tend to do one of two things. They are either agonists or ag antagonists or agonists. Antagonists block the receptor and prevent norepinephrine from binding to it, or agonists bind the receptor and mimic the effects of norepinephrine. Uh, common drugs found within these classes, you have alpha-1 blockers uh, bind to alpha-1 receptors, uh, particularly on smooth muscle cells. Uh, lining blood vessels. <clears throat> These block the action of norepinephrine, preventing blood vessels from constricting, lowers the blood pressure, and useful in treating hypertension. You, uh, somebody, some of you may be on a blood pressure medication that is an alpha blocker. 
Certain alpha blockers also cause relaxation of smooth muscles in the prostate gland, used to treat benign prostatic hyperplasia. Uh, alpha-2 blockers or alpha-2 agonists bind to the presynaptic alpha-2 receptors and activate them. Uh, these decrease the output of both preganglionic and postganglionic sympathetic neurons and may be used in treatment of hypertension and other conditions such as opiate withdrawal. <coughs> Uh, and then we talk about beta blockers. Uh, these are antagonists to bind beta-1 receptors of, heart, of the heart and decrease its rate and force of, force of contraction. Widely used in treatment of hypertension and other diseases of the cardiovascular system. Again, you may be on a beta blocker. Uh, beta-2 agonists bind uh, to the beta-2 receptors of smooth muscles and bronchioles, cause bronchial dilation, commonly used to treat asthma. Well, maybe I need to be on a beta-2 agonist and then I can get rid of this call. <clears throat> the effect of the sympathetic nervous system is to increase the metabolic rate. So to increase the rate that ATP is both produced and consumed. Uh, dietary supplement manufacturers create products intended to result in weight loss by capitalizing on this effect. Generally sold as topical creams that the user rubs over a problem area with excess adipose tissue. Uh, one chemical found uh, in many of these creams is something called Yohimbi. Uh, it is a plant that is, has an active agent called Yohimbine. Uh, these manufacturers will claim that these the, the Yohimbine binds to beta-3 receptors on the opetocytes and triggers breakdown of lipids. At best, this uh, information is misleading. Uh, actually blocks the alpha-1 receptors in blood vessels and alpha-2 receptors in the spinal cord. Causes vasodilation, while it also increases the activity of the sympathetic neurons. Can briefly increase the metabolic rate. Uh, they can also dangerously elevate heart rate, cause seizures, high blood pressure, and kidney failure, and lead to insomnia and panic attacks. Uh, fortunately, yohimbine is not actually absorbed through the epidermis in any significant amount, so it never really reaches the blood vessel in the dermis to hypodermis, which limits the amount of harm it can do to the body. All right, let's stop there, and we will pick up with the parasympathetic division uh, a little while later.